Hey everyone, welcome to a Bellatro tier list video. So if you're not aware, this is a poker roguelike where you play poker hands and try to get high scores. There's lots of jokers with like passive effects and this is not a gameplay video. I'm just showing gameplay off to get an idea of what the game is, but shortly I'm going to just cut to the tier list. So you can discard cards, you can play, I didn't even get a full house, but you can play two pair, you have hands which score and you can level them up. So all these are their base hand values, except for the hands of upgraded and you really should uh, play the game or watch more of the game before watching this video. Anyway, let's get to uh, tiering things. So this is the list of jokers in the game. There's only uh, three pages. The rest are locked because it's a demo, and the demo is the only version out at this time. So we're just gonna go from top uh, page up, page after page, left to right, you know, normally. So regular Joker plus four Molt. Uh, I call this the noob Joker because if you look around, like you see plus ten Molt, plus twenty Molt, plus fifteen Molt. They're not hard. It's not really that hard to get things that are better than plus four Molt. And you, like this card, this is a funny meme card, like, but it's better than plus four molts. It's a plus ten molts with a very negligible downside. Clearly, this one doesn't compete. So the noob joker goes in C tier. It's the only tier it can go, really. Also, um, to confuse everyone, I'm going to reverse the order. So again, the classic chess battle advanced CBA. Okay, next up, uh, well, this most I note, it's good in early game because you don't have many multipliers early on. Anyway, next one is Zany Joker. Plus 10 molt if played hand contains a three of a kind. This is a good effect. It works better in early game than Joker, than Noob Joker, of course, but it does fall off. And part of the reason is because there exists Joker's abstract Joker will be plus 10 molt. We'll get to that card probably, but this is a huge staple at the page of the game that's like anywhere mid game. Like, let's, let's go back to this save that I had. I have abstract Joker sitting here and it's plus two molt for each Joker. So I have plus eight molt already. Uh, there's five max joker slots, so there's just free 10 molts no matter what hand you play. And this is a common card, you can expect to see it. There are just better, easier ways to access good multiplier, but that doesn't mean that this is bad, it's just, it's just kind of decent, and it works well in the early game. Another detail is that it says contains a three of a kind. That includes like full houses, four of a kinds, five of a kinds, and flush houses, so it's not only three of a kind but it does lose steam after the mid game. Another important thing to think about as well with multiplier is the existence of additions. So if you go here, there's a list of additions that jokers can have. Usually you get base, but sometimes you get lucky in the shop and you get foils, which give you this base good effect. Like plus 30 chips is foils effect. Plus 10 is holographics effect, 10 multiplier. Polychrome is times 1.5 multiplier, which is very strong. And negative is plus one joker slot, also very strong. Now. The, the main point is holographic. Now this often comes up in runs. It probably comes up in like more than 50% of runs where you'll find a holographic and it just and it just clearly blows out any crappy multiplier effects like the one that I just showed out of the water. It's not all that much more expensive to buy so this is another reason this card falls off. So this would go in like low B tier. Next card is Mad Joker, plus 20 molt if played hand contains a four of a kind. Now, this kind of card requires its own category. It's very obvious that this is quite good in decks uh, and strategies that are already using four of a kind. Plus 20 is pretty good. It is over the majority of some of these, like plus 15 if it contains a straight, plus 10 if it contains a flush, plus 15. So plus 20 is definitely great, but it's it's rare as hell. By this early game, it will never ever try trigger. It's so much easier to get a full house than a four of a kind. So it needs this new situational category, which a bunch of cards are really going to have to fit in there. But situational stuff is pretty straightforward and when it's good and when it's not. Just don't buy it early game. It's it's um it's bait. Next one is Crazy Joker. Plus 15 molt if played hand contains a straight. Look at the next one. I mean, the flush is it's it's harder to make than the straight. Not in always the not all decks, but still. Although it's some, somewhat situational, it's like it works early game and it supports straight and straight flush type builds. It's good. It's not the best, but it will stay around and performs well enough even in mid game. So this probably goes like high B tier. We should also include the flush joker, which is behind. I don't know, like maybe it's it's worse than the three of a kind one. It probably goes behind because there's less hands that the flush can work with. Flush can work with Flush, straight flush, flush house. The three of a kind one just works more stuff. So that's why the that's why that one goes in this position. 
Next is Half Joker. Plus 15 molt if the played hand contains three or fewer cards. Now there's a bit of a description inconsistency here, as far as I've played. So uh, imagine I had the Joker there. Um, this would count. This would not count. Well, hold on, that's not a good example. This would not count because I played four cards, even though only two of them score. When I play this hand, only the tens will score. If I had that half Joker in my Joker's slot, I would have to play only three cards or fewer. So that would limit the hand types I could play to the ones below here. And the best hand I could play is a three of a kind. That's why I'm like <laughs> kind of rephrasing this stuff at the top. This is sort of the same description as that flush Joker <laughs> that I talked about. Although, because it's plus 15 multiplier, some builds are okay if you keep the Joker. Like, the reason that it doesn't work with the flush is because plus 10 mult is too competitive, but plus 15 is at least better than a holographic thing. It's also just super easy to make this work in the early game. It's like no effort, <laughs> but alright. That goes there. Somewhere in between here and here, but... I like to think that Half Joker is a little less sellable than Three of a Kind Joker. Next one, Ice Cream, which apparently people want me to make a Lingo custom map about ice cream, despite that I already secretly made it. Okay, um, back on topic, this is, this is just incredibly OP. Plus 100 chips. Now, this is not the time to get into a chip discussion, um, because some other cards are better to talk about with this example. But a lot of these other jokers don't even come close to 100. This is plus 20 chips for each remaining discard. You start with three discards uh, in your normal deck, and you can bring it up, but it's just, just 60, usually. And then you have to not discard in order to use it, which is, like, just... The comparison is insane there, and yes, Ice Cream does melt a little bit, but it melts, I think, slower than you would expect, especially because you've, like, one-shot a lot of hands due to how OP it is. There is a certain time for wanting chip upgrades, and this is, like, the best one in there. I think the, the most close com uh, competitor is Odd Todd, which has this sort of conditional but also kind of easy to activate effect, and it doesn't come close to 100. Well, I guess there are situations where it comes close to 100, well, that, that's a lie. Yeah, it does come close to 100 sometimes, but it's more situational. And Odd Todd is definitely going to be a high-ranked card, too. It's almost not even worth talking about the downside of it losing chips and melting, because the melting is obviously predictable. It's still good for a long time. It is obviously A tier. Um, there is one thing, though. Make sure to actually sell the... Like, there's, there's no secret for it melting. Like, if, if it goes to zero chips, it disappears, which sometimes sucks if you have an addition, especially a good addition, like polychrome on it, but you- but it shouldn't get that far. It's actually really hard to melt ice cream. I feel like narrating this part, so here's other things about ice cream. Uh, pause. Other otherwise, let's get on to the next Joker. Juggler, plus two cards in your hand. That means hand size. So if you look in this run, my hand size is eight out of eight. If I had Juggler, it'd be 10 out of 10, and I'd have 10 cards to select from. Now, if you've ever had moments where, oh, I just need one specific card, that's the perfect opportunity. Like, also, if you want to, like, discard a bunch of cards, but then keep some in hand to prepare for other hands, that's also another good use for Juggler. Also, when you open up this pack in the shop, or the Spectral pack, which is another thing where, if you buy the pack, you see a bunch of cards, and that is your hand size count as well. So if I had Juggler here, I would have 10 possible options, which just is just a little extra nice boost here. I've had the Joker come all the way to endgame, and I've always felt like it's it's just so much of an easier, smoother experience, at least to me, when, when playing with this Joker. So it gets a high score. It probably goes to A, maybe the Maybe on the lower end, considering some good A cards, but yes, that's pretty good. Alright, the next one is Hiker. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's Runner. Plus 20 chips, but then plus 10 chips permanently every time a straight is played. Now, okay, my- my- it should maybe show up my stats, which I haven't done, honestly. So, yeah, this is- I guess this is not really the time for statistic stuff, but might as well show it off. I've been doing too many meme runs to get a good win streak. Main point though is I've never gotten this to work. So it sure seems like the sort of thing that could scale up. But clearly this card suffers from early game hell. But if you're in the late game, can't do that because plus 20 chips is way too weak of an effect. But if you are in the early game, but you built your deck to use flushes, well, guess you can't play that. Not without severe regret anyway. It goes in the situational pile because it's... 
There are many ob situations where it's bad, and they're quite obvious. Next one is Golden Joker, and there's genuinely nothing wrong to say about Golden Joker. The thing about this, um, so in early game, you're going to overkill a lot of the uh, <laughs> enemies in one shot. To make the early game still interesting, there are economy jokers. I also count this as an economy joker. It spawns a tarot card, which is like one of these consumable effects. This is also an economy joker. Like you gain money for playing these, these specific hands. So instead of blatantly one-shotting things, like for example, this hand would one-shot this early boss and be an incredible overkill. This is a hand that would score at least 6,000 points. Even though this is a special example, the point is still here that if I had economy cards, I know this is not the golden joker, but this will apply to all economy cards I talk about. It's better in, in the early games to just farm money, don't don't play these overpowered hands, just try. You see, that almost one-shot it anyways, even though it wasn't the overpowered hand. So there is a place for economy jokers, like Golden Joker. It serves quite a different purpose from those multiplica uh, multiplier jokers, and it's a little weird to rank. It goes somewhere between B and A to me, like maybe there, on the high end of B. Yes, right words is better deal with it <laughs> in this list. And even in the mid game, you can get away with using that for longer than you would expect. Okay, Joker Stencil, this is a rare, so it's harder to get and more expensive, but times two multiplier if you have an empty Joker slot. So that means that it is disabled in this situation. I don't have an empty Joker slot, so it doesn't work. So it's kind of awkward when you get it early because you can't use it and you, you want to save it till the end because it's good. I think it's a little bit not good that you have to sacrifice a joker slot, but times two is powerful. Absolutely it is. It's just a little more awkward than usual. There is something in the demo, uh, the final boss. Uh, it has this special effect. All cards are debuffed until one joker is sold. So you can just sell a joker at the very end and that activates joker stencil and it's like it doesn't have a downside almost. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's undoubtedly powerful. Some misgivings about it. Whether it goes, it's better than ice cream, probably is, so I'm gonna put it there. Next is four fingers. All flushes and straights can be made with four cards. I remember seeing this and already thinking it was great. It makes straight flushes easier, obviously. And then flushes and straights become really easy. If you're making a flush or a straight build, you can just pump them out easily. So I thought it was good. And then I discovered the, the stupid trick that I had to read basically actually got spoiled on it. It's not even something that really makes sense with the game's official description of straight flush. Because you'd think all this really should do is make that five, say, four cards in a row. But instead, it's programmed in this ridiculous way where the hand counts as a straight flush. Now, it's because we have four cards to a flush here. Heart, 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 four to a flush. And we also have a four card straight of six, five, four, three. It's a straight and a flush at the same time. So that's why. This would also work if this 8 was like a 7 instead, because, uh, and it would score the 4 as well. Uh, it, it's really dumb. It's, now, I like it, it's like a funny, like it's a really funny type of hand. I should just reword it to make it clearer. It goes in A tier, but I know Straight Flush's score got buffed, but the, the problem is, there's not much that's synergized with it. Straight Flush is that a problem where it's been like a weak type of thing to build for. Even if you upgrade this hand a lot, like it'll still be weaker than like Flush House and Flush House is much easier to make. Okay, well, if you have four fingers, you can make more straight flushes, but the just the, the point value is too low. Uh, four fingers can't help a Flush House build, by the way. Um, you, you can only, you only need to play four of a flush, but I'd say it's not enough. Ceremonial Dagger. When the blind is selected, basically when, it, when you start the fight, destroy the joker to the right and add its sell value to its molt. Now jokers have sort of varying costs, but they're like the sell value is going to be half of what they cost to buy. So golden joker costs six dollars. You sell it, it's you get three dollars. Ice cream costs four dollars. You sell it, you get two dollars. Um. So yeah, it's it's. What do you think this card is? Well, it's trash. I'm not going to bother writing the whole description out. It's bad. And everyone knows it. Basically doesn't combo with anything except for Egg, which gains specifically sell value at the end of the round. And this... There's not many rounds. Forced to have Egg taking up a Joker slot forever. 
you don't get the money it's a situational combo and the targeting the right mo the joker to the right prevents you from putting multiplier effects because there is an order to like this or like this then you can't put it at the very end otherwise you'll sacrifice the joker just more awkwardness to an already bad card that doesn't have any mult to start with and constantly bleeds money next is banner plus 20 chips for each remaining discard it's worse than ice cream for sure this is really underwhelming for an uncommon card in rarity but it goes somewhere in this pile of stuff if you just compare it to odd todd like it's it's much easier to get Odd Todd to work out, and you don't even sacrifice your discards. The only fun little pairing it has, Banner, is Delayed Gratification. If you don't use discards, you gain money. So that's a fun little combo, but it's hard to get off, because especially because this is an uncommon rarity. Marvel Joker adds one stone card to your deck at the start of every round. The stone card is a card with plus 50 chips, no rank or suit. That means it will always score as well. So you can play like a three of a kind and then two stone cards. They will all score. And this is just a really good way to get extra chips. It's a thing you get early game when it looks like high card can be good, when you don't really care what hand you play, but I definitely wouldn't put it low. So why is dagger in situational? Whoops. It's not playable in anything. Anyway, it belongs in situational. I don't think it's a bad joker. I have won rounds within the past, but it's just not... Usually you would skip it. Next page. Loyalty card. Times 4. Of course, times is a very powerful effect. Times 4 molts every 6 hands played. 5 remaining is also some extra text. Uh, note that that means... Like, when it says 1 remaining, it doesn't trigger. It goes from 1 remaining to saying active, and then it will trigger on that hand. This can absolutely be a late game carrying kind of effect. I'd say it kind of feels clunky. So it goes in somewhere bottom of A tier. It's also worth the noting that the, your default number of hands is 4. So you can't get it to trigger every time unless you have some bonus effects like this. If you gain plus 3 hands and lose all this cards. So then, if you have this thing, you have seven hands, and then loyalty card will trigger every fight. Or it could really plan it out, have it trigger, <laughs> and trigger this twice in the same fight. Eight ball, plus one tarot card if two or more eights are played. So tarot cards are consumable cards that give you uh, good, pretty good effects that can be very, very good at times. Sometimes they're just okay. Um, but two or more eights are played. Of course, you need to actually play the cards, they can't just be in the hand you submit. This is insane economy, it can also be duplicated with Blueprint, which we'll get to soon, but... And Blueprint doesn't work with a lot of other economy cards. So this is very strong. One of the best economy cards, and it's easy to make 8s sometimes. You can, like, make 7s turn to 8s by upgrading your rank. You can add dupes. It is pretty good. So it goes on the bot bottom ish of A tier, but you could make an argument that it can carry runs. So, probably there. Another thing that I mentioned is the dollar diminishing returns. Uh, this is, what I mean by that is, if you have too much money, 34 is not even what I'm talking about. Like, you can get like $70 with, and more with like cars like the Hermit, which doubles the money. You can easily get those accidentally and gain way too much. Um, the diminishing returns is this reroll thing. Like, eventually, you're gonna buy stuff in the shop, you're gonna run out of good stuff to buy in the shop. And many runs devolve to the point where they have lots of money, and you spend reroll. This number goes up every time you reroll. Like, you can buy the voucher or whatever. It goes up by one dollar, and it keeps going, and this is the most scammy thing in the game. Like, you can- I've spent, like, Thirty dollars on a reroll in a single shop got nothing good because you really want a high roll for like holographic effects and such. So this is the money diminishing returns because like you you buy out the shop and then what? You're, you're wasting on bad rerolls. So because the eight ball doesn't give you money but instead playable cards, that's pretty good. This print. This is a funny effect. I th I swear the lat in, in the playtest, not the demo version, they could give you negative multipliers. Uh, but it's it goes from zero to twenty. It is a random value between zero to twenty. Uh, of course, on average, that's like ten, so that's pretty good. But clearly, random is a little worse. Of course, twenty can one shot stuff, but also sometimes it gets zero, and then you're like, wow, just wasted the hand. For some reason, the thing like. For some unknown reason, the thing is like the second most completed round card I have. 
I guess maybe it's a good early game. I, I swear the card has like a cheated extra chance to appear just because of the description and the glitchy effect is funny. But if you, you want to farm specific hands to play, like you can win way too early by accident. You can also lose for really no good reason. You can't predict your score. So it goes somewhere within this loony bin of stuff. Probably low B. Next, Blueprint. Copies ability of Joker to the right. That's... It, that's like the most OP thing ever. It is pretty much everyone has that S because, you know, doubling effects are always way too overpowered, but just show some OP clips with it, right? So blueprint, you can drag it around in your inventory. I've moved it to give plus three hands twice. Um, so when blind is chosen, gain three hands and lose all discards. Blueprint's compatible with that effect. So I just gained, I usually have four hands, now I have ten hands. That's incredibly strong. And the whole lose all discards effect is not even painful after the first one. But not only that, like, you can move it around and it's like, oh, now it doubles some other amazing multiplier effect. Now, it doesn't work on like, some jokers, like the economy jokers doesn't work for. It doesn't work on juggler. Um... I, I thought it was weird at first, but actually it does make sense because you could like discard cards and then the hand size of uh, cards, when, when you draw cards, it goes and tries to draw as many until you have max hand size and like being able to mess with that would be overpowered uh, every time you just try to discard something. However, it does work with something like Marble Joker. It works with 8 ball, which creates cards, which is it's like... Why block it on some jokers, but not that one? It works with Dusk, which is one of the ways high scores can happen because Dusk, we'll get to that card, of course, and like more specifics about Burglar. But this uh, Blueprint Dusk is one of the overpowered uh, high score combos. Some of the effects just don't make sense, like Spear Joker and Four Fingers, those like modify cards in a very specific, described way. So they're incompatible for L L like. Otherwise, it makes no sense reasons. I don't think it's compatible with Golden Joker. I think it's compatible with To-Do List for some reason. But even despite all the incompatibilities, there's too much overpowered stuff you can do with it. It's highly flexible. You can move it around. Like, even if it didn't, like, have the economy Joker effect. Like, let's say you had, uh, I don't know, Zany Joker and Crazy Joker at the same time. You had Blueprint. You could move the Blueprint around to try to get the best molt, or even a lower molt in case you're farming hands for some reason. It's overpowered, but it's also the fun overpowered, because you don't get to move around cards that much. Raised Fist, okay. Adds double the rank of lowest card held in hand to molt. I like this card, like you, you have to play in a different kind of way. What the, my Bellatro's crashing, I just, I, I didn't even do anything different. <laughs> okay, I've, not, I've actually never had many bugs in that game, in this game, so that's funny. I sorry for the light mode jump scare. Anyway, oh, did I, what? This one is just busted now? All right, whatever. So basically, the way this works, let's imagine I had raised fist in hand, or in my inventory. So let's say I played this full house. This too would be the, the thing that raised fist looks at. It goes and doubles it, so it's four, so I get plus four molt. If I decided to use this instead as my hand, then I would have be I would be playing the two, which means that my lowest unplayed card is an eight. So eight would double, it would go to sixteen, and I get plus sixteen molt. So it's cool in that it makes you play these low cost not low cost, low rank cards in order to get your raised fist multiplier up, which is like a cool way. Like it's like a unique goal. It makes you want to either discard or play them. So it's a little awkward because like flushes and straights have to play five cards and th therefore it doesn't have much freedom with the kinds of cards you have to play and therefore can get rid of. Uh, face cards also count as 10. And I mean, it's just a generically good multiplier card to me. Like you can just imagine, oh, like the, the average is five. Sure, the average is five and you can control it. So it's probably a little more than five. Or five is then the lowest rank card in hand. So you would get 10 mult if you had the five as lowest card. But it's not doing anything that special. It does restrict you somewhat, which is like annoying if you're playing very specific types of strong hands. And then like you're forced to have like a two at the end. It's, it is a perfectly okay and fine joker to play with. I think it's like low A or something. It's, it's honestly not powerful enough to be an uncommon to me, but sure. The same is true for Fibonacci in a weird way. This gives you plus four molt for every ace, two, three, five, or eight. So what, ki what kinds of hands can play that? Well, or can get the most benefit. It's an ace, two, three, four, five straight that's low, because you can play aces low. And it's like 16 molt. 
16 molts is no longer that competitive by end game. It's and to clarify, 16 conditional molt. It's like in this weird okay range, and the situationalness is very restricting. There are some other cards further down the list, like even Steven, which also boosts five specific cards, but it's a common. And it's not really clear that this is better than this one necessarily. Considering, oh yeah, Fibonacci can get the specific straight, but the cards on that straight are lower than the cards that even Steven. It's too similar. Let's think about it this way. You gain plus 16 multiplier if you play an ace speed for 5 straight. But then I have this 15 multiplier straight joker right there. Now, of course, this does trigger on some other hands like uh, full houses with ace, two, three, five, eight. But it just makes the comparison like that you can compare its signals like they're pretty close in this range. And again, it's not that good of a joker. But if you do happen to get like, hey, like fives and eights of full house, of flush house, then sure, why not? So, Cardomancer spawns a tarot card when blind is selected. In other words, when you when you start start of round you get a free tarot card well this is worse than the eight ball it's i i don't know so it goes like in this range i imagine but it's comparison with golden joker is a little weird like you can use the tarot card um even though tarot packs kind of cost four dollars it's not the same because you like this lets you get two tarot cards both the one in the tarot booster pack shop and the one you get from here the you can't choose what card it is like, it could be a trash card you get from Cardamancer. You can't farm it, so it's worse than 8-Ball, of course. The the main noticeable bad part is the poor timing that you get. Um, the thing is, like, a lot of tarot cards are a, a select specific cards. Let's see if we can find a good example in-game. Okay, so look at that. Enhances two selected cards to bolt cards. It's it's not a rare instance where you can have your entire oh but bad luck here um um all right so it's not rare that that this might be entirely filled with effects like this that enhance two second cards to molt cards you can't play it unless you've seen the tarot pack but sometimes you don't have that kind of situation and sometimes it's just, it's just sad to have to use one of an effect like that inside the tarot effect selection you can use tarot cards while you were in that tarot menu so you could get in this in the shop with the consumable slots filled you would click next round and if i had cardamancer right now then it would just do nothing. I'd be forced to sell one of the tarot cards I was holding in order for it to generate probably a worse tarot card. So that is what I mean by that poor timing part. Like, 8-Ball doesn't have that problem because you just choose when to play it and you already get to see your cards. And if I wanted to, then I could just like play the effect now and then it would be empty. Next is Astronomer. All planet cards in the shop are free. What does that mean? Well, let's get to the next shop and show you. So what it means is not to the pack. If you had Astronomer here, the pack would not be free. And maybe it should be a buff that it's free, uh, even though it'd be almost OP. If, if I got planets in here, which I'm not getting... Wow, what a bad example. But if I got any planets in there, then it would cost zero dollars. That's the idea of Astronomer. Now, the amount of times this thing is a scam is enough to get it sent right to D slot. Best case, you buy it. You, like it, you get some planets that you probably didn't care about then sell it and like you feel kind of okay about it but how do you see more planet cards in the shop you have to re-roll you get scammed you don't get planet cards it's trash now uh, I mean you should know by now that planet cards are upgrades to hands and you're just gonna get a lot of planets of car of like hands you don't play you're gonna upgrade way more hands than you actually need now the one Joker that makes this actually kind of work is one called Constellation. Uh, it's right here. So it gains times mult, which is good, slowly per planet card used. So there is a combo if you get Constellation Astronomer near the early game, but it is kind of luck based. And ultimately it's just a really situational, luck based economy Joker. It's bad. Is there anything that needs to be said about Abstract Joker? Plus two mult for each Joker card. Uh, you you have five Joker slots to begin with. I heard that New Game Plus, which is not in the demo, but is in like previous uh, versions, in like the full version, is you get extra Joker slots. 
the another effect that give extra Joker slots is the negative effect, which gives plus one Joker slot. So that plus ten molt max could go to plus twelve or plus fourteen. But plus ten unconditional is insane. Even in early game, in the early game is the only time when it won't be plus 10 molt, and you won't need that much molt anyway early game. It is a very easy, solid A tier kind of thing. If we go slightly behind Raised Fist, I don't know, maybe Raised Fist is a little situational. Um, but yes, that is, it's really good. Okay, next is Delayed Gratification. Gain $2 per discard if no discards are used by the end of the round. The amount of money you get from this is incredible. It's just insane amount. It's often it will be better than golden joker in practice the comparison is not perfect because you know obviously it is more conditional you do have to not use this cards which kind of sucks i think it does pay for itself but you probably would want to sell it sooner than you would sell golden joker there is also a boss where you have zero discards that doesn't combo with there's you have to watch out for the stupid things that doesn't combo with because uh, one time I bought Burglar with it when you lose all this because it doesn't trigger there. But yes, very good Joker there. Next is Gruss Mikkel, Michael, whatever you pronounce it. Um, it's plus 10 molt, and an effect that doesn't really happen most of the time. And when it happens, like, you just start to place, replace it with some holographic. Hopefully, you've got to mid game by that point. But yes, plus 10 molt, it's unconditional in quotes. Um, you can play it like it's unconditional. If it dies, it, like, the Ghost Michelle was good enough that it, you don't, you're still happy. So it goes somewhere in A tier. Uh, definitely beneath Abstract Joker and probably Raised Fist, but very good. Now, the, the one bad thing is that it, there's some effects that randomly give Jokers, like, addition effects. Like this one, add negative to random Joker, a little, like, which is plus one Joker slot. Also the Luck Terra card where you can get random effects and additions to Jokers. And obviously having these effects on a Joker that can die at any time, kind of sad. But those are pretty rare effects anyway. Okay, the next one is Even Steven. We've talked about this in a similar way to Fibonacci. Of course, it being common, it's much more common. Sometimes it doesn't survive till endgame because, like, I've duplicated enough eight sixes and stuff like that. But this does, in fact, make 20 molt. It's, I don't quite know how to score it because I've had situations like those, and sometimes it's just a generic card. That only provides like 8 to 12 molt. I have like no complaints about it. It does feel a little off about the way I've ordered this so far below like Gross Michelle. It is worth though that face cards don't count as evens, so it's better in abandoned deck. There's some tension in whether I did actually put this in the right place, to be honest. So you could make an argument for like sometimes being better enough than the banana, but Eh. Right, the next one over is Odd Todd, plus 20 chips per each odd rank card played. Ace 9753, yes, ace counts. Now I think this one goes in a much higher and different kind of place from the rest of the stuff. And that's just because of, like, I believe I talked about it a little bit in the video, but plus chips is very, is, is a very different place than plus molt. You get plus molt stuff all the time, and there aren't that many plus chips cards. Odd Todd is something that can survive into the end game because it doesn't have the plus molt diminishing returns. Of course, if you had more plus chips cards, yes, that would be diminishing returns if you had many plus chips type jokers, but you don't. So, I'd say below feels accurate. It is not bad at all. Like, you get tons of chips. It also works well with times multiplier effects due to the way things are ordered. Like, let's say you had a lot of Joker stencil multiplier. Hold on, this is not the example I wanted to bring up. Um, I mean glass cards. So the timing of glass cards is they happen before Jokers ever get the, ch the chance to molt, unless you're playing even Steven Fibonacci, where their multipliers come when you play the card instead of at the end of your card counting a uh, card scoring step. So for example, if you have glass cards and the noob joker, you get the plus four molt after the times multiplier has already happened, which is a horrible waste, but plus chip stuff can avoid that because like the chips don't have that ordering issue. They're just another type of multiplier. All right, so scholar, aces each give plus four molt and plus 20 chips when played. It's almost like a combination of the two previous jokers roll into one. And it's a 420 joke for some reason. The, it's it's situational. It's obviously situational. Um, I'd recommend not getting it early game 
you, in early game, you really need extra multiplier, and you can't do this luck-based thing where you try to draw aces. It is very, very bad early game. Of course, you would only do it if you're going for high scoring, good hands where you already have like ace duplicates and such. Otherwise, it's very bad. It would probably go like somewhere there if you had to rank it amongst usual builds. Next is business card. Base cards also have one half chance to give $2 when played. I mean, I really think of it as $1 when played all the time because I like averaging things out. And I mean, I thought this was fine. I believe Blueprint can duplicate this effect as well. It is something that you can easily farm, kind of easily farm. It's, it's very, it's satisfying to farm it. It's it's hard to wonder because like it's kind of worse than Golden Joker because if you go out of your way to play face cards, you're losing on hands a little bit. Certain builds can farm. It's probably very similar to Golden Joker. Now, uh, just like a lot of these other effects, uh, when playing, that means that it needs to score as well. Kind of weird with like debuffs, but like debuffs, even though they kind of count as score, I think you cannot get the chance if it's a debuffed card. And of course you can't play an abandoned deck because that deck has no face cards and it's just not a good idea to try playing it there. So it goes a little below. How does it compare to like Cardamancer? Hmm. Probably Cardamancer is better. Okay. Last place, Supernova. Adds the number of times Poker Can has been played to Molt. Feels like Ride the Bus should be a comparison at this point. So what does that mean? Let's check out this run that I had. So I played a full house twice, so that number is two. That's the number of times I played a full house in this game. So that number slowly goes up. If you're playing a variety of hands, that doesn't usually go above 15. So you have to specifically play a single hand over and over again, which is already a bit narrow. Then you're locked into that kind of build because then, oh, I played it like 15 times. Now I can barely pivot. And if it takes effort to make the hand, like let's say I want to make straight flushes, uh, well, you're not going to play it very often, that's for sure. Even its best case scenario is like, like you get 30 molt. You have to hope that that will win for the rest of the run because you can't pivot anymore. Or you play high card build. That's it. <laughs> At least with high card build, you don't have any higher expectations. Ride the bus. Plus one molt per consecutive hand played without a scoring face card. The scoring is doing a bunch of stuff there. Like, if the face card is debuffed, then it doesn't break the multiplier. Uh, if, if you play it to get rid of the face card, but it doesn't score. Like, you play a pair with the face card. Or you play an ace, and it's the highest card. Then it doesn't reset it. And, uh, yeah, this goes up one by one, every, every time you play a hand, plus one molt over, like, it just constantly increases. It's really OP. Like, there's some runs that I don't even have the motivation to finish. It's like, it would make for a boring video to use Abandoned Deck, to use Ride the Bus. So it's like, either this or this. I mean, you know, there's an argument for putting it as the best card in the game, uh, because with Blueprint, you can sometimes get an early game and then lose because it doesn't do anything by itself. I mean, there's a deck type that doesn't even have face cards in it. It's called the Abandoned Deck with no face cards. And, yeah. Like, it's very easy to win games when you just farm it. You can gain, like, plus four molt every round if you, if you want to farm it. Um, playing it on the yellow deck or red deck is actually kind of cool because you have to intentionally get rid of face cards sometimes. It's a fun experience there. Absolutely unnecessarily OP on abandoned deck too. Like, you, you need to put no effort in, in that in that kind of deck. Something needs to be done about this card, in my opinion. Like, maybe make it harder on abandoned deck. Although, even with the yellow deck, you just play like high cards and win easily. I've been thinking maybe abandoned deck should like keep the kings, queens, and jacks, but like when you play them, they are removed from your deck. Like it has this like, that would be cool in my opinion, but there's there's many ways to take it. And that probably wouldn't fix Ride the Bus that much anyway. Well, I guess if you have to score them to get rid of them, then that's kind of cool. It makes it a little harder to play early game. It'll still scale way too hard though. Oh well. So. Blackboard. Time to molt if all unplayed cards in hand are spades or clubs. So, you play a hand, you're probably gonna have three cards remaining. Unfortunately, there's like some anti synergy with Juggler, which is, if you remember, the uh, hand size improver. Um, so, basically, no hearts or diamonds can be in your unplayed hand. Uh, otherwise, if you do that, then you lose the molt. So, I can also rephrase to say so, if the unplayed hand has no hearts or diamonds, or the clubs and spades description. Uh, time to molt, very strong, very strong after that with only one joker. However, it's a clunky effect. It's bad with wild cards. Wild cards are a thing where you can, it's a special effect. If you put it on a card, it can be any suit. It ruins it if immediately. 
because it'll it count as a heart even though you don't want it to and like you like you really i feel like they need to fix that because that's a game it's a run ruiner and probably a rage quit inducer same thing goes for debuffs i believe like if you have a debuffed club it stops counting as a club and it's a really jank weird mechanic it's not consistent feeling at all considering those cards also they say the rank when you hover over them and can score for flushes and full house and all that stuff anyway so also like if you need to play a card a hand at a certain time like loyalty card um if you have only have one hand remaining of course if for some reason you have a need to get rid of your discards or whatever it's hard to time it because like you could discard hearts and diamonds only to draw heart and diamond and then what do you do you gotta waste the hand so very strong effect times two is great the like but it is it is well designed in my opinion that it is clunky like this to balance out such a good effect egg three dollars sell value gain and around it's about the worst economy joker i mean if you compare to golden joker it's obvious and there's a mechanic called interest where if you bank money at the end of the round for every five dollars you bank up to 25 dollars um, you get interest so if you have $25 at the end of the round, gain $5. So that's the max. A golden joker will gain interest. Egg will sit there. You probably don't want to sell it to make it grow, but it's just very disappointing. You'll want to get it if it's the only option you can think of getting. But otherwise, it's bad. Often it'll be better than buying no joker, but it's still not where you want to be with the economy. Of course, it has that combo with the dagger, but it's that's a joke combo anyway. It also has a combo with a tarot card called Temperance here. It gives the total sell value of all current jokers. So if you get this a bunch of times, finally it'll combo with Egg as if it wasn't easy enough to make money with overpowered Temperance anyway. Here you have Burglar, which is just a joke effect. I already talked about how it's OP with Blueprint because the effect is duplicated, but you don't have, like the losing all discards doesn't really happen the second time around. And gaining hands is also very good. It lets you farm specifically those cards like a lot of cards you can farm you can farm to-do list which gains uh money if you play certain hands you can farm hiker when any card played you can give, give one chip you can farm this to spawn tarot cards you can farm bus obviously you can farm eight ball uh, loyalty card synergy that's not farming exactly but it works as an example farm business card and farm runner like anything where you play specific hands or you, like, and it gives you bonuses permanently, that works. The thing is, the synergies might not exist in the full version. And I don't know. I don't quite know how to rank it either. And I don't play it in every, you know, game. Like, not all decks want it. But it's very strong. I'll move it... Worse than 8-Ball. That's making you feel like Juggler is too high. I don't know. Scary Face. There's not enough synergy for Scary Face. Plus 20 chips when played. I mean, it combos with that. Uh, and Abandoned Deck can't play it. No face cards. So, I mean, there isn't enough support for it. Like, uh, like the Ride the Bus is, is clearly against that, even if you're playing only yellow. It got me through the early game at some points. I, I don't want to rank it that low, but... And of course, you're getting a lot less, like, potential chip increases because compared to Odd Todd. Odd Todd has five potential cards that can get it, get this effect, and Scary Face only has, like, three. I think it's just hard to rank because of the fact that you can't play it well in the Abandoned deck. It... Like, I don't think it's that bad considering, like, the chip... Like, you could get to the end of a yellow deck run, need some extra plus chips, and hey, Scary Face is there, and it's not bad at that point. But there are much better things. Oh, it maybe it belongs in here. I don't know. Mystic Summit, plus 15 Molt when zero discards remain. Um, so it's very good. It's very good. You can also control it. So in case you're trying to farm hands, then you can have it off by just not going to zero discards. But it is kind of clunky. Like, let's say you already drew a good hand on the first turn. Then you have to intentionally get rid of discards. It's a little sad. And also, like, let's say you do get rid of discards, and now you drew trash after that. So then you can't fix it with this card, and have to waste hands. So that's a bit clunky, but both, the number of molts is very good here. It's definitely up there. It's somewhere in the B to A range. We'll put it in between the Econs just, just to ruin the 
Econ's Dusk. Retrigger scoring hands in final card, final hand of round. It's okay. So this one, people rate it high. I don't get why people rate it high. I mean, I kind of get it because it allows for some of the most overpowered high scores due to glass cards. But that's a huge exception. So glass cards, um, that's an effect where you times to the current multiplier. So if you have five glass cards, Dusk will trigger all five of them and you get times to five more times. Due to exponentials, that's weight that's incredibly strong that adds up to like uh, 16 times more mult. No, it's actually 32 times. Then Dusk Blueprint, that's 32 times again. So that's why Dusk Blueprint is the main overpowered combo people co keep talking about with it. But in practice, you never actually want it in almost all builds except that one. Because, like, it only triggers the card scoring, and oftentimes it won't even be times two worth. Because it's not the last hand is played twice, it's the cards in there are scored another time. And if you don't have anything special like glass, it just, you don't double the base value of your hand. Also, you're, like, the effect is that you're almost going to lose and then you play it. So you're also hoping to almost lose. It's not actually a good effect, so therefore it goes in situational. DNA. If first hand of round has only one card, add a permanent copy of the deck and draw to hand. Uh, that means that if, if it's the first hand, which means that can discard stuff, let's say I play the Ace of Spades and some other crap, then DNA is the trigger. If I play only the Ace of Spades, then I get a permanent copy added to the deck, and then I draw it. The drawing back part is a little unnecessary to me, but the whole idea is that you permanently get copies of arbitrary cards. So this allows some impossible hands to be made, like Flush Houses and Five of a Kinds. Now, this is another situational card. That's why I'm not going to put it in an S or A or whatever these people love to do. It's another situational card where sometimes you, you see in the shop, and you just cannot go for such a thing. Like straight flush builds, it's too much of a bad idea. Maybe you've already decided on some really good jokers, and yeah. Many times it'll just suck. Many times it'll be really good though, and it's when you already have a card, preferably with special editions as well. They're not editions, yes, there, there is a special fact that can give these editions onto regular cards, not just jokers. And this Molt one, definitely incredibly strong, you would want to copy that. But really any of them, as well as copying glass cards, which is the classic synergy. But that's nothing only thing you can use it for. It's still pretty good, but it's still situational. Anyway, splash. Every played card counts in scoring. So the usual effect is let's just play some like example hand. So here, I'm playing a two pair with aces and sixes. The aces and sixes are the two pair, and the four does not score. Notice that it got like ignored. And if I do that, I'm only playing a high card, so all the cards except the jack are unscored. So even if I play this like five and whatever, the fives are the only one that will get scored. So if I had splash, every played card would count. Not actually a very powerful effect. I mean, so many hands are five cards anyway. So what, you're doing a high card run? Is that why you would play Splash? Seems not very nice. It doesn't work with Ride the Bus. It only kind of works with stuff like, well, no, because that would score as a pair almost all the time. Like Scholar, maybe, or Fibonacci, or Business Card. Like basically anything where you want to play cards and to trigger effects, but can't make a good hand for some reason. That's when you want to play Splash. There aren't that many situations because, I mean, you really want to play good hands and then good hands make you score. You don't need a joker for that. It's another thing where I think the descriptions of stuff are inconsistent. Like, it, it says every, the, the game's description says every played card, when that is meant scoring card for like the rest of the jokers. But anyway, there's like a low C tier right there. Okay. Smear Joker makes hearts and diamonds count as the same suit, and spades and clubs count as the same suit. So that's for flushes and stuff. So you can have a straight flush with hearts and diamonds arbitrarily. So it's great for straight flushes, and especially flush houses. Yes, you can make easy flushes with it, but that's not really the important bit. If you have Smear Joker, you can make a flush house way very easily if you edit your deck slightly. So let's say you have like uh, the eight of clubs, eight of spades, four of clubs, four of spades. So that is already four cards to a flush house. You just need an eight or a four that is black. 
but you do have to dig through your deck a lot to make it work. And you really need to pay attention to that kind of thing. It's, for that reason, a banded deck is probably what you want to actually pair with it. So we can draw those flush houses. But honestly, it, sometimes it's felt like it's not proving its worth as a joker slot, especially because we can do flush houses without Spirit Joker's help sometimes. I mean, okay, we're gonna move that just with space. I have often wondered sometimes, what am I even doing with Smear Joker? It sometimes doesn't even feel as good as Four Fingers to me. Probably because you need to, like, if you want a straight flush with a Four Fingers, you can get, you can dig for that easier because you have more options um, for straight flushes to make. While this one, you need very specific cards to make it work. So I'm actually rating it lower than Four Fingers. Okay, Constellation gains times 1, 0 0.1 molt per planet card used. It starts, oh, it starts at 1x molt. This is a weird effect. I haven't gotten it to work, but I have seen people get it to work. It doesn't seem that hard. You just need to get it early game. And then it can get up to like 3 molt, 4 molt, 5x molt, which are very good uh, values. It's a fine enough card. Now, think of a polychrome effect. That would be 1.5x molt. And that's good enough to drop what you're doing, sell almost any joker to get it. And Constellation doesn't take that much more effort to get to 1.5x, it's just you need to play 5 planet cards, and that's that's pretty reasonable. It's it's a bit odd because obviously it is a bit of a money bait too, like if you buy a freaking $8 pack and uh, just for effectively 0.1x vault, because you're going to be upgrading a lot of hands you don't need. There's a voucher called Telescope that lets you, the, the most played hand will appear always in a booster pack. That definitely comes with this. It honestly is a card that I might be underrated. Like if I put it down here, it, it almost seems like I'm, I'm implying it won't even get to 1.5 most of the time. Because if it was just 1.5, it goes like really high. But you can't get it to 1.5 always in some middle game, uh, near end game situations. Even though you can get in a lot of them. So it's somewhere in this range, in my opinion. Hmm. Like, Abstract Joker is just viable in a lot more situations, but this is a much more powerful effect. Whatever, I'll leave it somewhere there and the whole thing show on screen. Okay, we only have three left. Hiker. When any card is played, permanent plus one chip. Uh, note that it does not, like, it upgrades after it, after the scoring, which is a curse kind of thing. The, it's like the opposite of Supernova, actually. With Supernova, the when you play the hand, it gets plus one, and then the molt triggers. So if I never played a high card, I'd still get plus one molt off Supernova, which isn't really square that well with Hiker, um, because you don't get the freaking chip upgrade until after the scoring. Not that it makes that much of a difference because I've never got this to work well. Like this is the kind of thing that wants to farm stuff. The most like I've ever seen a single card is like plus six extra chips from it. It is really pathetic in my opinion. You can buy it early game and then you'll get some really unnoticeable boost in the late game which i but it's it's cool that it's permanent even if you sell the joker but it's also scoring instead of just playing the hand so you need to score it to get the chip improvement it's weird because if you imagine it theoretically you have four hands uh base per game and you can play five cards so theoretically hikers should be able to upgrade 20 times in other words gain plus 20 chips in value but it's also like spread out amongst all your deck and you're not going to always draw the upgraded cards and so it's like a 20 out of 52 cards will get upgraded let's just say that now unless you're playing the same 20 cards every match which is not really likely it's going to maybe feel like plus seven chips per match which still to me feels incredibly slow i've never got it to work i forgot to rank blackboard i don't know how i did that uh multiple spades or clubs Yes, it's a great effect, but it is annoyingly situational. Uh, sometimes, like, it's not that consistent to get it to trigger. You know, the right build, this can easily skyrocket to, like, up there effectively, but it's just not all the time. Okay, so let's get to superposition. If scoring hand contains an ace and a straight, note there's, like, weird stuff going on there with uh, splash and uh, four fingers, which allows you to play less uh, less than five cards straight and, and score aces that are not part of the straight, which is like a meme weird combo there. Anyway, spawn a terror planet card. This last part to spawn a terror planet card is worse than just spawning a terror card because planets give you a lot of stuff you don't need, uh, a lot of hands you upgrade and there's just nothing good there. You could sell the planet card for $2 each. That's fine. 
It's also harder to make than eight ball. Um, it's like an ace, ace two, three, four, five straight, or a ace king queen jack ten straight are the reason, the only reasonable ways to really get here. Uh, unless you have some ways to cheat out straights or something. Uh, only Constellation really makes it better, so... Unfortunately, this does go on the low end, but it is not bad. It is... I think it's probably the best C card. It's, like, somewhere around there. Definitely not that bad. It's... I like playing with Superposition, and if that's the econ... If, you, if, you, if that's your only economy card, it's fine enough. Okay, we have exactly one left. Gain four dollars if Poker Hand is a four of a kind. Poker Hand changes on every payout. So this four of a kind thing, it's not always four of a kind. It can be any of the hand types. I don't really remember, like, or really checked. Like, if you unlock one of the two secret hands, will this be able to show the secret hand? I'm not sure. Probably will. Um, so, love this effect. Go if you recall, Golden Joker is four dollars if you end the round. You can get this effect much more consistently than a lot of the other stuff, including like the, the $1 effectively for each face card thing. I think this is very good. This is... Uh, I'd honestly go... Besides the freaking tarot card 8-ball thing, this might be the best economy joker, or like it's very close to it. It's so farmable. Now, it does, it does have that diminishing returns of extra money, but you gain the money in the round, which has a fun little effect where you can, like, you can mess with the interest payments. You can come into the next round with zero dollars, farm this thing for five hands, let's say you are have a hand upgrade or whatever, and then it will count as twenty dollars of interest, and then the twenty dollars will count with the interest mechanic. So if you have this good build that can farm money, you won't, you generally won't have even the interest, uh, or not interest, you won't have the too much money problem, at least not as badly if you do that trick. The thing can farm money better than delayed gratification. I mean, it's, it's really good in my opinion. People have ranked this thing low. In my first year system, I put it in the S tier as like a joke, but not quite, like, it, it's not quite a joke in the sense that it's a response to other people thinking it's bad. It goes... Is that a fair place? I don't know, it could go even higher, I don't know. Well, I don't, probably can't compete with 1.5. An economy joker, it's like, kind of, this is the best it can do, but... Yeah, I've been impressed, very impressed with the list. Anyway, that is all of it. This is 45, uh, there's 45 jokers the de in, in the demo, and this is all of them. So, yeah. I wanted to do this video before the demo does a surprise shutdown. Also because I don't feel like I've seen many strategy related like opinion or analysis type videos on the game and yeah, pretty cool. Can I do one on some of these? I feel like they're pretty obvious, the tarot cards and stuff. I understand that this video probably has more limited appeal considering that you have to know enough about the game to really get something out of the strategy. But anyway, bye. Also, if you want some whiplash on how different opinions can be, this is Xerity, who has finally timestamped a lot of my videos, and the tier list is completely different from Xerity. The creator of Bellatro also ranked it, surprisingly, and once again, it's very different. Chess Battle Advanced.